Hey there, Simplifiers! We have reached the end of September and also National Preparedness Month, but there was one more topic that I felt like was really important that I wanted to talk to you about, and that is sheltering in place. So today we're going to talk about what it means and what you might need if you need to shelter in place. So what exactly does it mean to shelter in place? Say for instance there is some sort of natural or man-made disaster that requires you to stay in your home or at your place of employment for a significant amount of time. What sorts of items would you need if you needed to camp out there for a while? That is what you put into your shelter in place kit. Now many of the items that you would need are things that you keep around your home anyway. You can gather them all up and put them into duffel bags or plastic tubs if you want, or just make sure that you have all of these items on hand on a regular basis. I've created a check sheet, which I will link to below in the description so that you can check off to see what items you have around your home already and what you might want to add in case you do have this need to shelter at your home. I've adapted this particular list from ready.gov, which is FEMA's disaster preparedness site, but there are several versions out there either by bloggers or by the Red Cross or by the CDC. So there's lots of information that's out there on this topic. This is just a basic list of supplies you want to have and then you can add as you need for your family. To start, you want to make sure that you have enough water for drinking and for personal hygiene purposes. They recommend one gallon per person for at least three days. So for instance, for my family, there's four of us, we would need three gallons per person for a total of 12 gallons of water. Ideally, that's what we would keep on hand in case of an emergency. You also want to keep on hand a three-day supply of non-perishable food items. So anything that doesn't need to be refrigerated or won't go bad in the course of three days once it's been opened. It's also good to have some sort of hand crank powered or battery powered radio so that you can listen to any alerts or communication just in case cell phone towers are down, the television isn't working, you don't have electricity in your house. You want to make sure that you can keep in touch with the outside world and know what is going on. If you choose a battery powered radio, be sure to also include extra batteries in that size in your kit. You also want to make sure that you have a flashlight and or candles so that you can have light once the sun goes down. It's good to have a first aid kit within this kit. Now you may have extra band-aids and first aid supplies in your linen closet or in your kitchen, but the great thing about having these first aid supplies in this kit is that if you need to take your kit with you, you can just throw this whole kit into the car and not worry about running around and picking up the supplies from other places in your house. It's also good to have dust masks in case there's any sort of debris that you don't want you and your family breathing in and a whistle so that you can signal for help in case the top part of your house collapses but you are safe in the basement. And then you have to think about what you would do if you don't have plumbing but you can't leave your house. What sorts of items do you need for personal sanitation? Be sure to include some plastic baggies, twist ties, and any sort of toilet paper or wet wipes that you might want to use in case you gotta go do. You also may want to include some tools like a wrench or pliers to turn off the gas or water that's coming into your home, or a can opener in case the non-perishable food items you have in your kit our cans. And something that us digital people may not have on hand but can come in handy is a map, like an actual map, like a piece of paper map. It's really important to have in case you need to know your way around or get out of a place and you don't have GPS. Some suggested items that you might want to include in this kit may be dog food if you have pets, baby supplies like formula and diapers and wet wipes if you have a baby, extra medication and glasses in case your glasses would break or in case you would run out of your prescription before a pharmacy would be open again. You also may want to include extra clothing for your family like long sleeve shirt, long pants, extra socks in case there is a time when you would need to leave your home and travel and you don't know what the weather would be like. 
It's good to keep some cash around just in case you don't have access to an ATM or the credit card machines are down. You may want to include a fire extinguisher and some matches in a waterproof case, of course. You may want to include some personal hygiene products like shampoo, conditioner, toothpaste, and this is a great place to keep those little hotel toiletry samples that you took from the last time you went on vacation. If you have kids, you might want to consider throwing a game or some toys or some coloring books into the kit also because, again, if you don't have access to your entire home or it's recommended that you stay in place in your basement, you may not be able to go up and get things safely. So you want to make sure that you have something to keep the kids entertained, especially if they're going to be there for a while. So is there anything that you think I've missed? Or have I scared you into making a shelter in place kit? My goal is not to scare you, but to help you be prepared because as they say, luck favors the prepared. So put together what you can, pull from items that are already in your home and do what you can to make sure that you keep your family safe just in case there is some sort of an emergency where you need to stay in your home. Thank you so much for watching and if you've missed anything from my organizing in case of emergency series, you can catch up by clicking right here. And as always, please subscribe if you don't want to miss any of my organizing tips or simplifying ideas for you and your family. Hope you have a great weekend and I will see you next time on Organizing with Simple Solutions.